And we're back with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, we'll look at our second conversation here. Nigeria plans to combat climate change by introducing carbon tax. Well, according to the federal government, they are expected to set a price which emitters like you and I will pay for each ton of greenhouse gas emissions. Nigerian's government is set to introduce that carbon tax policy and budgetary system for the country in line with the approval of energy transition plan as part of climate change act. President Mohamed Buhari had recently approved the energy transition plan to be driven by the National Council on Climate Change, that's the NCC, in accordance with the Climate Change Act of 2021. So a carbon tax or tax on greenhouse gases would come in two broad forms. Uh, the emission tax, which is based on the quantity an entity produces and a tax on goods or services that are generally gas, uh, you know, green gas intensive, such as the carbon tax on gasoline. Now, under that arrangement, the federal government is expected to set a price which emitters would have to pay. Uh, we talked about that, the ton of greenhouse gas emission. Now, apart from that, uh, the tax would help to generate revenue for the government, uh, which will encourage consumers to take steps to switch fuels, adopt new technologies, and reduce uh, emission to avoid paying the tax. So, well, the NCCC had sought and obtained the approval to initiate key deliverable content in Climate Change Act, including establishing a carbon uh, budget for the country. According to them, carbon budget is now going to provide allowance for every entity, whether the government or private sector, in terms of how much emission one is allowed to, you know, put out there. Exceeding those emission could also attract penalties. And this is, you know, some of the approvals or deliverables that have been sorted out. We have Maja Kudumi, who is very passionate about the environment. He joins our conversation this morning. Uh, Maja Kudumi, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. It's good to be here. Thank you. So I'd like to share your thoughts on, you know, this development by the Nigerian government. I'd like you to juxtapose that with uh, our capacity to renewable energy. How far have we fed with that? Well, we have tremendous amounts of um, potentials for the, for the renewables. Absolutely no doubt about that. I mean, we're talking about abundant sunshine, great wind, tidal waves. We've got it. But the constraint is the lack of um, economic incentive, because right now it's not very profitable, it's far more profitable to be using the fossil fuels. But the reality has, you know, dawned, is set in. There's no ambiguity about it. It's as simple as, you know, two plus two equals four. And if you're denying that, then, you know, you need, you need help. So the reality has set in that we can no longer continue poisoning the atmosphere the way we are if we want to have a reasonable kind of life in the future. Because climate change is a, a powerful force. And we're seeing it manifesting all over the world now. In Nigeria, we've been fairly lucky, despite some of the terrible floods that we've been having. We've been fairly lucky. It hasn't impacted us as badly as it has in other countries. But if we continue this way, it certainly will. So it's a very, very laudable um, decision. Um, in terms of transiting to renewables, no, we're not doing enough. The time has come. This is unprecedented. Look, humanity has never, ever faced this type of situation before in the history of humanity. This is unprecedented, uh, where the whole world is being threatened by a particular situation. So I'd like us to talk about this. I mean, just as Kofi comes in now, it's very valid. We understand, you know, the challenges of the, uh, our environment, climate change and the impact. Uh, we're feeling it and everybody feels it every other time. So I'd like to ask you if you think that the introduction of uh, taxes on, I mean, we're going to be taxing uh, ourselves for emitting carbon into the society when we don't have what it's, it takes for us to uh, not use, you know, fissile fuel and what the policy environment, does it make sense? I'm just trying to ask if, if this is rational. Have we put in place the necessary um, facilities, what we need to transit? Yeah, that's a, that's a very insightful um, observation of the situation on ground. It doesn't take long, to be honest. 
it doesn't take long. I mean, I personally tried to introduce uh, solar panels for rural areas decades ago, but there was so much resistance. It doesn't take long. But, you see, the situation is, it is so dire. And, you know, your opening statement was that, you know, we are understanding the negative impacts we're having on the environment. Well, I wish this was the case. We're not. It's like the situation is like you're in your studio right now, God forbid. And there's a small fire that starts in the ceiling. You can smell the smoke and everything. And you're just ignoring it and saying, oh, well, it, 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 it's okay. We're, we're not ready to put fire extinguisher. We're not ready to do anything. It, no, this is the situation. And it's not my knowledge. You know, I, I'm just listening to the scientists, to 90, over 95% of scientists are telling us that we are on a headlong rush to an unstoppable circumstance which will bring catastrophic consequences to humanity if we don't stop poisoning the atmosphere. Again, if I bring a generator into that your studio, which is a closed environment, and you will not allow me to turn it on because you know what's going to happen. Now, the millions and millions of tons Maybe, these maybe, gases maybe, we're maybe, maybe we need to put it at this point. If we're saying that we don't need to poison the environment, do we have alternative? It's that simple. What alternative yeah. have we made available? Yeah. I mean, if you look at China, they're the greatest in terms of emitting carbon into the system. And they're also part of the mm -hmm. renew. They're committed to renewable energy. You can say uh, part of the energy that they're consuming now, some a certain percentage is from you know, renewable sources. Are we there yet? Mm -hmm. What renewable sources do we have as a country? I mean, how, you know, yeah. can we be having these conversations when developed climbs are having it? Yeah, you know, no, you're absolutely right. It's obviously there's a little bit of time for a transition. We are, you know, the, the, the world globally, we have about eight years, maybe 12 years to transit. And then it's going to be too late to reverse the process. So we've got a few years. And what we're looking at now is a, a natural gas as the transition energy, even though that also can be quite dangerous because natural gas is also a very, very strong greenhouse gas if it leaks. And if it's uh, used irresponsibly, which it has been done or transmitted irresponsibly, then you get leakages. So we, we have the natural gas as an immediate, an immediate transition because a lot of diesel generators can even be converted to natural gas. And then within years, within just a few years, you're talking of China, there's other countries in the world that have the technology, we borrow the technology. We have the capacity to develop solar cells here. We have the capacity to have uh, wind, wind farms in the higher areas, which will generate the electricity. Waves will generate the electricity. The problem that we, that we don't have is the mindset, is the mindset, the leadership need to come to the table with a mindset that they are here to serve the people, to be servants to the civil society, and to do the best that they can to protect the people from hardship, protect the people from danger, protect the people from sickness, ailments, all kinds of problems that come with this fossil fuel. It's the mindset, the caring. They've got to come with, a, with an attitude of love for the people that they're leading. And once that happens, you will see the changes of our transition to clean energy happening very, very quickly. So it's down to the leaders. Express some love. Give us some love. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, that's what Magic me. Uh, um, uh, when I look at this, this you know, uh, news of um, a green a climate tax, I, I laugh. I laugh. It's, it's one of the most laughable things. I've, I've had in the year 2023. And I'm, the way I'm laughing about it, I may keep laughing to 2024, because as far as um, we are in this country, the government that, that, that is saying they want to do a, a, a carbon tax, they're the biggest polluters in the country. Government, the federal government of Nigeria is the biggest polluter in the country. I don't know if you agree with that. You're an environmental activist for many years. Nigeria's government is the, is the biggest player in the oil and gas industry. Should we talk about the, the, the oil explore, exploration activities and the emission of, of, of gas, greenhouse gases because of that? Should we talk about the, the, the impact on the environment? I mean, I, I lived and worked in Port Harcourt for many years you know, as a journalist. And mm -hmm. we, we did some advocacy on the suit 
you know, and government was complicit, you know, in all ramifications. And that's why they kept looking the other way. And that's why they've done nothing about it. That's number one. You look at the refineries. They run the biggest refineries in the country. Okay, number one. Number two, if you look at even the, those who use, um, um, who use generating sets, we are using generating sets because they failed to provide electricity for us. So they are the exactly. biggest culprit. So what are they talking about when they say they want to tax people, you know, for carbon emissions? That, that is laughable. What do you say to this, please? Yeah, I, 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 I perfectly empathize with you. You know, when you see, um, you know, I'm also guilty of, of, of this as well. When I see a, a child behaving foolishly, I laugh, you know, because it's just a, it's just a natural reaction to laugh at foolishness. And I, I agree with you entirely that um, the two just don't add up very well because here we are driven by the use of this fossil fuel. Fossil fuel, it's our mainstay of our economy, which it shouldn't because it's not sustainable. Agriculture is far more sustainable. The fossil fuel runs out. And also the totally irresponsible use of the revenues from the fossil fuel. Look at Norway, which also had fossil fuel as the mainstay of their economy. They have the biggest sovereign wealth fund in the world because, again, the government, who understood something about the implications of being leaders, the implications of getting the reactions to your actions, which are inviolable, by the way. The government of Norway invested so much of the money that they made from fossil fuel into uh, different businesses and investments all around the world. We haven't done that. Unfortunately, our leaders are guilty of a lot of anomalies. They're guilty of a lot of things that uh, are now beginning to impact very, very negatively on the people. But it's not too late to change. And whilst the pollution in those areas that you were at, you know, my heart goes out to you because as a journalist, you must have seen some horrendous things. You know, young children die prematurely in droves because of the yeah. atmosphere is polluted, the water is polluted yeah. because of the irresponsible extraction of this product. No, 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 no. It's not acceptable. And the suit, how can the suit have gone on for so long? So when you're faced with um, leadership that will allow this to continue, it gives cause for extreme anxiety. And the best therapy for anxiety is to laugh. So I don't blame you for for laughing at them, but it's doable. All we need is to have people in position who understand the implications of action, begetting reaction. Okay, I have a final question for you. So should such a tax, I mean, which is not a bad idea if the, 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 they're sincere about it, which we you know it's debatable, but should such a tax just be about the collection of money? Should there be uh, an aspect of using the tax to further the aim of um, uh, making Nigeria carbon neutral? or at least getting, to, uh, getting close to that. Because um, they have something called effluent, a lot of states in the country today have what they call effluent discharge tax. Um, it's a tax, uh, you know, uh, method or, or uh, charged to companies, businesses, organizations for um, the harm they do to the environment. So there's something there already called effluent discharge tax. I'll use River State as an example. They give you a demand notice, and then they say pay this amount of money to the government. But they meant, if you look at the laws, to um, the, the, you know, the laws that came uh, offshoot of um, the various environmental protection agencies of the states. Um, uh, mm -hmm. They're they, they meant to use this effluent research to reduce the effect and the harmful impact on the environment. But they don't do it. You know? So I, I have done some investigations to see in years past that these monies are shared amongst government cronies. It does, they don't reinvest the money into the environment. So what lessons can yes, we learn so from that for this carbon tax? Excellent, excellent observation and very, very pertinent question. It's totally inexcusable. Now, the thing is about this tax, if it's levied mainly at the large corporate sectors, that would be uh, a little bit um, more amenable, would be a bit better. But also, also the, um, the oil and gas sector, you know, they are making tremendous amounts of profits, especially over the last year. You know, the major oil companies have made unprecedented profits. So, you know, they also should be taxed because they are the source of this pollution, which again, let's emphasize, 
this pollution is causing a very terrible situation that is emanating on humanity that is being expressed from Nigeria all the way through Africa, all the way around the world. It's a common problem that humanity is facing. And we should demand of the leaders, we should demand of them that any money that is raised will be used to, number one, help us to adapt to the effects that the pollution is already causing, especially the climate change, and also help us to mitigate. And by mitigating, it means moving away from using poison. As one of the great young activists said, you know, you cannot drink oil, you cannot eat coal, you cannot breathe so-called natural gas. What good will money do you on a dead planet? And we're killing off the environment, killing off the planet. And the, the implications for those who are allowing this to happen is very horrendous. They should, they, they should listen to scripture. The All scriptures right, uh, tell us God is not more. Go Whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. So okay. let's hopefully sow the right seed this time. No, thank you so much, Desmond Maja Kodumi, uh, for being part of the show. We do appreciate your time. Yes, indeed. Uh, Desu Magic, Magic Kodumi is a Nigerian environmentalist, environmentalist. He is also chairman of Lekki State Urban Forest and Animal Shelter Initiative, a radio show host um, right here in Lagos. He hosts Green R on 99.3 Nigeria Info FM. Uh, Mercy, it's an interesting time. Uh, we'll watch what these policies will, will, will achieve at the end of the day. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, but we have to go. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Follow us on social media at Plus TV Africa and on YouTube at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Also check out our website. It's usually updated with a lot of news, up to the minute news on our website. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Ebupo. We join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us. Good morning.